All right, so a quick little video on uh, keyframe tangents inside 3ds Max. Uh, what I've done here is I've just put together a very, very basic uh, key pose movement for a ball bounce here. Uh, as you can see, looking at the curves, 3ds Max is automatically going to give you some Bezier curves on some of those vertices where you can see at the bottom of my curve here, my slope, uh, we've got some acceleration, deacceleration, or some slow in and some slow out. Uh, I don't really want to have that for a ball bounce. Again, thinking about the way that a ball bounce uh, actually interacts with the ground, right? Typically, a ball is going to bounce and it's going to really kind of bounce off the ground very, very quickly. So we don't really want to have the ball kind of really slow down and almost kind of slightly come to a rest as it hits the ground here, like we've got currently in our scene. It kind of looks like there's actually air blowing on the ball, at, like kind of from underneath it. So inside the curve editor here, what we can do, um, you can kind of see down at the bottom, right? I've got these, these Bezier handles with these vertices. Now you can see I can kind of move this around and this will alter the way that the ball interacts in, in terms of like the way it actually plays in our animation. Um, that being said, this type of an animation or if I know the ball is going to bounce very quickly off the ground, typically rather than going in and messing around with my Bezier handles, sometimes it's actually easier for me to simply change the keyframe tangent altogether. Uh, what a keyframe tangent is, is simply it's a, a type of keyframe or, or, or basically changing the keyframe type inside the curve editor. Um, other types of software, uh, they typically use the the terminology like keyframe interpolation or something like that uh, is the same type of concept. So if I have a keyframe here where I have like this Bezier handle, instead what I would rather have is just simply have this almost like a corner vertice or uh, basically like a, have a fast tangent applied to it where this curve is basically going to kind of angle out at a sharp angle, almost like a V-like shape or a V-like angle. Uh, that way our ball, ball is going to bounce very sharply off the ground and I would like to have that for both my first pose and my last pose. So I'm just going to go ahead and simply lasso select those vertices or those keyframes rather inside my curve editor and then top right hand corner inside my curve editor here you're going to find some of these different types of keyframe tangents. What I'm doing right now is I'm holding down on my middle mouse button and it's just simply scrolling through those different options and we're going to be looking for these set tangents to fast option. So you simply can see in my curve editor I, I just clicked on set tangents the fast it's removed those Bezier handles from those keyframes and now when I press play inside my animation uh, you can see we have a much more kind of like realistic look to the bounce obviously it's not perfect but it's starting to get a little bit closer to something more believable uh, where we would actually have a ball bouncing inside the real world or in the real world now another thing we can change here to make this a little bit more kind of timed nicer uh, we can take our top key here and what I would like to do is I would like to kind of scale out these Bezier handles now we could grab each Bezier handle and just do you know, each one individually. Um, I don't really like doing that personally because that's going to leave me with slightly uneven curves here on each side. I would like the, this curve to be nice and symmetric. So I'm going to go up to the top of my curve editor here and we've got an option here for scale tangents up. Uh, and you have the same option for scale tangents down. So if you go ahead and just simply click on that button, what it does is it scales out those Bezier handles, or you can see that in my curve editor, scales out the Bezier handle, which is going to add a little bit more of like a an actual mound or a peak to our curve here, which can thinking about the way that the curves actually interact with our animation. Uh, if I'm creating this peak here on my, my curve, I'm basically forcing the ball to stay a little bit more delayed or, or hang a little bit more in the air. So it's going to create a little bit more of like a, a stylized kind of timing on our ball. And you can kind of see inside my viewport now, we have a much more appealing animation just by simply making those changes.